Gordian, by reason of its location and fertile lands watered by the Sakarya River, has been home to people for thousands of years. With a remarkable succession of cultures, an impressive array of tumuli, or earthen burial mounds, and its local museum, Gordian assumes a special, well-deserved position in the geography of Anatolia. If you follow the signs for Yasuhug, Gordian, once you enter Polatla, a 17-kilometer trip will bring you to the tumuli of Phrygian nobility and other prominent individuals and to the Gordian Museum. Directly across the road from the museum soars the Great Tumulus. With a diameter of 300 meters and a height of 55 meters, it is the second largest tumulus in the ancient world. To view the underlying wooden tomb, you pass through an 82-meter-long tunnel that was dug by skilled coal miners from Zonguldak. The concrete chamber that houses the tomb is a masterwork of Turkish engineering. The tomb itself, constructed in the 8th century BC, is made of pine wood, surrounded on all sides by juniper logs, some of which are over 3,700 years old. Tumulus and tomb together stand as one of the world's unique monuments. Although we do not know what the deceased king had for his last meal, thanks to chemical analyses, we do know that the funeral meal consisted of a spicy red meat stew with lentils and a beverage made of beer, wine and honey. In 1963, the Gordian Museum was founded on a roughly 15,000 meter square plot of land at the outskirts of a village with a population of 250. In the late 1990s, the Yena Yilmaz wing was added and the exhibits were totally reorganized along largely chronological lines. With its depots, laboratory, media and conference hall and both open air and interior displays accompanied by explanatory text in Turkish and in English, the Gordian Museum is without a doubt one of the most important museums in Turkey. Although finds from the Gordian excavations dominate the exhibits, also on display are ancient materials from elsewhere in the sub-district of Polatla. The Gordian Museum distinguished itself by reaching the final stage in the 1999-2000 competition for the Museum of the Year of Europe. Among the items on display in the first gallery of the museum are ceramic vessels belonging to the early, middle and late Bronze Ages, 3000 to 1200 BC, and to the early Phrygian period, 1100 to 800 BC, early Iron Age sculpted author states, and early Phrygian iron implements and equipment used in textile production. In the Yenar Yilmaz Gallery are ceramic vessels and other goods belonging to later Phrygian times, the 8th to 4th century BC, imported pottery from Lydia and Greece, and materials from the Hellenistic, 3rd to 2nd centuries BC, and Roman, 1st century BC to 5th century AD periods. Also to be found in the museum are examples of Phrygian writing, pottery stamping, and architectural terracottas, and a stone relief of the Phrygian goddess Mata or Kibele. The settlement mound at Polatla is represented by a variety of objects and also examples of burials belonging to the oldest identifiable Anatolian people, the Hattians of the early Bronze Age. In the last cases before exiting the museum are examples of glass goods, seals and ceilings, and coins dating to the Hellenistic period. In the garden of the museum, Phrygian and Roman mosaics and a Galatian tomb are on display. If you follow the asphalt road leading west from Yasuhuk village for one kilometer and take a dirt road leading off to the left, you will after about 100 meters, arrive at the settlement mound of Gordium on the bank of the Sakarya River. The village of Yasuhuk, flat-topped settlement mound, takes its name from the mound, which lies in a district that is under the archaeological jurisdiction of the Museum of Anatolian Civilizations. We welcome you to the capital of the Phrygians.
Although the name Gordian does not occur in a wide variety of ancient texts, the geographer Strabo, who came from Amasya, wrote in the first century BC that Gordian was in his time no more than a village. The name Gordian may be a shortened form of Gordiaion, meaning the place of King Gordias. As part of a thriving succession of civilizations over nearly 4,000 years, the capital of the Phrygians, Gordian, is a place of legends. The site was discovered in 1893 and first excavated in 1900. Since 1950, the 350 by 500 meter mound has been the focus of continuous archaeological activity. The sun rises once more at Gordian, as it has for thousands of years. crack of dawn, the archaeologists excavating this mysterious city begin their day. They work with all their strength and with the hope of solving yet another puzzle. Perhaps after a little while, a brush or the point of a trowel will come across a mystery belonging to Alexander the Great or even to Midas. They work with patience, sifting the earth and, if necessary, washing it so that not a single find is lost. First settled in the early Bronze Age, 3000 to 2000 BC, the time of the Hattic civilization, Gordian saw habitation across the Middle and the Late Bronze Ages, 2000 to 1200 BC, the time of the Hittites. The Phrygian presence extended from 1100 to 300 BC. During this time, the site came under Lydian domination in the early 6th century. From the mid-6th century until the coming of Alexander the Great in 334, Gordian was part of the Persian Empire. In the subsequent Hellenistic or Galatian period, the late 4th to 2nd centuries BC, Gordian was a thriving commercial town. After a gap in habitation, the site saw settlement as a village in Roman and Byzantine times, the 1st to the 7th centuries AD. The final period of occupation was in the Seljuk period, the 12th to 13th centuries AD. The early Phrygian city was entered through a gate complex preserved to a height of 10 meters. The metal scaffolding seen there is part of an ongoing conservation project. Within the city lies the palace area, consisting of two courts divided by a large wall and flanked by megarons. The largest of the megarons, which yielded wealthy finds, is thought to have been the reception hall of the Phrygian kings. In the multi-roomed terrace building, the presence of looms and other textile-related materials, rising stones for turning wheat and barley into flour, and provisions for cooking implies that these units were seeing to the creature needs of the palace. Phrygian territory included the entire provinces of Ankara, Eskishir and Afyon, the eastern part of Kutahya province, and the northerly portions of the provinces of Konya, Sparta and Burdur. However, if you want to learn about the Phrygians, coming to the capital of Gordian in the sub-district of Polatla will be sufficient. When the Phrygians came from Europe, they brought with them such cultural traits as tumulus burials and their language. Yet they also came under the influence of Anatolian culture, one example being the worship of Mata Kibale. We know nothing of Phrygian beliefs before they came to Anatolia. Yet once here, they embraced the concept of a mother goddess, a religious tradition that extends back to Neolithic times. The economic basis of Gordian included textile production from the wool of sheep and goats, probable leather working, agriculture, and iron and bronze manufacture. 
In the regions of Anatolia, the Phrygians came too from the Balkans. We still see today the well-known Balkan speciality of honey wine, which recalls the mixed beverage detected in the Great Tumulus. Having crossed into Anatolia from Europe in the 12th century BC, the Phrygians were to live at Gordian for nearly a thousand years. While the city brings to mind the early rise of Gordias as king, still more so does it cause us to reflect on the legends of his son Midas, which assume an important place in Anatolian mythology. In the annals of the Assyrian king Sargon II, Midas appears as Meta between the years 718 and 709. However, is it appropriate for an overcome king to commit suicide by drinking bull's blood or by hurling himself from the ramparts? Is it really true that everything he touched turned to gold? Or again, was it because he was unjust to the god Apollo in a music contest that he received donkey's ears? Or did this fanciful notion arise because he had established a very broad intelligence network? And again, as sages believed, was it because Alexander the Great impatiently cut with his sword the Gordian knot, rather than try to unravel it and gain its good fortune that he died at the early age of 33. No one knows, but roughly four centuries after his lifetime, Alexander's personality came to be enmeshed with the legend at Gordian on the part of ancient writers to carry down to the present day. Indeed, it was because of Gordian's strategic position on his route of conquest that Alexander, king of Macedonia and conqueror of Asia, wintered here in 333 BC. In closing, we believe that the ongoing excavations at Gordian will continue to unravel many knots regarding the Phrygians and the archaeology of Anatolia. If you ever happen to come by Pomatla, you can visit the Alagos Karagyah Museum, the Sakarya War Cemetery and Museum, the Cannoneers History Museum, and the Agriculture Museum before climbing Duartepe, where in Gordian you can stand with King Midas on the shores of the Sakarya River and watch the unmatchable sunset. The Ministry of Culture and Tourism of the Republic of Turkey views itself as the custodian of a cultural heritage that belongs to the world regardless of date or civilization represented. Among the ministry's most important duties is the preservation for posterity of this heritage.